Hello there and welcome back to another edition of the Hollow Out Classic Remastered. This time we're taking a look at the 1997 Toyota Caldina GT T. Uh, this is, I think, one of my favourite Japanese cars ever. I love the Toyota Caldina, especially this generation of the Caldina. So, essentially what the Caldina was is the Toyota Avensis, which we got here, and it was quite dreary. It's that but with a Celica GT4 drivetrain in it. And it's a wagon. And it comes in two-tone. It looks amazing. Um, unfortunately, the race mod sort of takes away some of the almost off-roady bits they put on this. I think it has like a little sort of bumper guard and stuff on it uh, from the factory. And that makes it look awesome. It's almost like a Toyota version of the Gravel Express from Subaru. Maybe not quite as cool as that. Uh, but in terms of sort of powertrain and stuff, I think it is awesome. It is, for all intents and purposes, the Toyota Sleeker GT4 wagon, which you didn't know you needed until you found it today. This was a car that, you know, I never really gravitated towards much, and then so when you grow up and then you actually find, like, a real picture of this and then find out what it is, you're like, that is amazing. Uh, so, yeah, and I think this sits in sort of the truly unique part of GT2 that I really like, where, you know, obviously you've got your Impreza wagons and so on, but there's also your really obscure wagons, like the Caldina and the, the quick version of the Forester, even though it's technically not a wagon, and the Mazda 323 uh, S-Wagon. You know, you've got a lot of these sort of weird and wonderful wagons that don't really get a lot of representation these days, and maybe better off forgotten by history. Uh, in certain cases, but um, yeah, I just love it. I love this Caldina. I I would dearly love a Caldina real life. I'd need a garage to probably stop it like rotting itself to death, but uh, I would love one of these things. Anyways, uh, this one does come with a sort of kind of boring race mod, which sort of takes away from it a little bit. It does say Caldina on the side, which is cool, and it does come in green, uh, which is cool, but it's sort of very nonchalant. It's nowhere near as cool as something like the Subaru Foresters or the 323 S-Wagons race mod, uh, but it's still quite cool. Four-wheel drive, 381 horsepower, 1,229 kilos. Is this going to be quick? It really does depend on the gearbox, because I think these were all automatics. I could be wrong. Anyways, this car is going to get six laps of the Motorsports Land 5-speed. That's probably an automatic. Um, this car is going to get six laps of the Motorsports Land track in order to the best time it possibly can. Our current leader is the Audi TT LM Edition. Uh, car set a time of a 26.690. This car unlikely to beat that. In terms of what the Caldina is targeting, uh, we've had the Mazda 323 S Wagon, that's at a time of 30.7. Uh, we've also had the Subaru Forester, which set a time of a 29.4 or something ridiculous. I don't think the Caldina is quite going to be on the level of that. Uh, I suspect this is going to be quicker than the 323. But I don't think it's going to be quite on the level of uh, the Forester. I think this is going to be a tricky sell into the under 30 club as well. I just don't think it's going to have the gearbox or the handling to really get it into there. And statistically, it's not all that impressive. But um, Or I could be totally wrong and it could get a 30.119. Alright, uh, we might get into the under 30 club with this then. I hope we do. Uh, that would be uh, very cool for me. And the Caldina. Uh, the other thing I've noticed about this car is it has the smallest plate holder I've ever seen. Look at that indent on the boot lid. It just looks like a tongue. It looks like it's very happy. It, it's happy to be showcased on the Hot Lap Classic. We need more cars that are just happy to be here. 29.623. Alright, maybe it is going to get close to that Forester. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I don't really know where it's going to go from here. I don't think it's going to be quite as quick as the Forester. Admittedly, the Forester, uh, statistically, also wasn't all that interesting. I think that also has an automatic gearbox in the uh, STB, which is the version of the game. So, um, yeah, interesting. Uh, one sort of interesting point to note on this is not only has this beaten lots of Sleeker GT4s, which all shows you how sort of bad those cars have been. Admittedly, this being a 97, I think, is more based on the ST205 
So, I mean, the ST205 is the one decent Celica we've had go round. So, I guess that makes a little bit more sense, but, um, yeah. It's also quicker than the Nissan Sunny, or the uh, Pulsar, and the Mazda 323 GTR. So, quicker than sort of two proper rally bred vehicles, which is uh, interesting to say the least. It is just nice to drive this. It is sort of nice, controllable, easy to uh, to chuck around. Got a little bit on the dirt there through that final sector. Uh, I think it could maybe have gone a tad quicker. Again, I don't think this would have threatened something like uh, that Legacy. But uh, it did... Oh, Legacy, sorry, the uh, Forester. But it did pretty good. There is no denying that. Um, this was a thoroughly good car to drive. Like I say, maybe a little bit more sort of understeery than some of the equivalents from like Subarus with the Impressors and stuff. But um, yeah, definitely a definitely a good car. Definitely a quick car as well, as it turns out. Yeah, I was right. That final sector, a little bit compromised, but not by much. There really isn't much more time coming out of that. It does have to be said. Uh, but a 29.623 will place this into 97th place. Goes in between the Shelby Cobra Daytona Coupe and the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 3 GSR. So it is quicker than an Evo 3. It's also quicker than the R32 Nismo, Roof BTR, um, quicker than a Viper. As I mentioned, it's about point one up the road from the Pulsar and the Mazda 323. Uh, quicker than a 95 Impreza wagon. So, in terms of uh, sort of where this compares to Impreza's, it's not as quick as, well, the Forester, uh, the Impreza WRX wagon, which is about 0.2 up the road. Uh, it's not quite there, but it's not far off. I mean, it's not even that much slower than a Mitsubishi Galant, so... Yeah, it's a good car. It really is just a genuinely good car. I think out of all these sort of oddball wagons, this might be the most approachable of all of them. Uh, the Forester is obviously quicker around a lap, but um, that car has a lot more sort of body roll. Uh, it's just not quite as sort of nice to drive as this is. Uh, well, something like the Mazda 323 just suffers with atrocious understeer. In case you're wondering where this stacks up compared to that, it's 1.1 seconds quicker. So... Unfortunately, the 323F or 323S wagon has to be a bit of a loser on this occasion. But um, yeah, it's just it's a good car to drive. There is no doubting that one. And I do recommend it uh, because it's awesome. Anyways, that's it for this episode. Thank you all very much for watching. Join me next time when I will be driving something completely different. Until then, farewell.